Hey, good morning. We'll call the meeting to order for the day. First item is approval of today's agenda. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Citizens to be heard. Seeing none, we'll move on. Approval of pay, payment of bills and vouchers. Move approval. Yeah. Second. They should be here. We'll have, uh, we have a motion and a second to pay the bills. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approval of minutes from the May 28th and June 4th meetings. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes for May 28th and June 4th. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, first item is a closed session on our market study preliminary results. Uh, I would move to close. A motion to close. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, next item on our agenda is request approval of revision to emergency assistance plan. Rhonda, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Okay. You've all met Larry before. Larry Young is our supervisor of our ankle maintenance unit. So his, uh, he and his staff are the ones that um, manage our emergency assistance program. And we are looking for just a small revision to our emergency assistance plan. This plan um, does get sent down to the State Department of Human Services as well, and they review it as well. So. I don't anticipate any concerns, but just to give you a little bit of a background, um, our emergency assistance program is funded through primarily 92% of the funds come from federal revenue, 8% comes from state funds. Our county gets about 1.1 million in what's called the MFIP Consolidated Fund, and about 180,000 of that is budgeted to our EA program. The rest of that revenue is budgeted. We earn about 130,000 of it for our staff, and then the rest is under contract with rural Minnesota SEP. And SEP works with our families who are on the MFIP cash grant program um, for um, job services in our DWP program. So we're only talking about the EA portion of this program, and what we're wanting to do is add um, the ability to approve child care um, deposits for families that are struggling with that child care deposit through our EA plan. And that is a legitimate um, um, piece that we could approve per the Department of Human Services. So um, that's really our only revision, but if you have questions about the EA plan, or Larry, if you yep. have something to add? Well, we're, we're seeing a lot more deposits that are being asked for from child care providers. I don't know if it's because people leave and they don't make their last payment or something, so it's kind of just like rental property where somebody, a child care provider wants money in place before you go to child care and just in case something happens. Um, and so we find a lot of our families that obviously to be eligible for child care you have to have low income to be eligible and then you're going to pay for child care and then you're going to be responsible for some of the care ch costs in child care and if you have two three kids that are in child care some of the providers might ask for a deposit for each of the children and so our goal is, is to try to and it's stop some of the families from being able to get into some of the child care because if I'm going to have to pay something to send my child to child care. I'm not making, I'm barely making enough to even make me eligible for child care and then have to come up with this deposit at the same time. It causes quite a hindrance to the families. And so our goal is to say out of this emergency money is that even if it's a three person home or whatever, we would pay the deposit for one of the children. So that would help the family so that we would pay the deposit so it's allowing them to be able to get a person in child care. Because there's a lot of times where we might be able to prove that they're eligible for child care, but then, then the next step is to say yes, then come up with this deposit money, and then they can't, and then their application denies because they never got enrolled into a child care provider. So. So, so if they get into this 
and the deposits there, what's the process for having the pot deposit returned? Well, I don't believe we really have come up with. Well, I mean, we we anticipate. We it's, anticip it's like if like I, if, anticip I go, yeah, if I go I'm rent sorry. a place, yes. and I put a deposit down, it, it's there to uh, protect an investment on the part of the yeah. of the private enterprise. And, mm -hmm. and for us, and at we, some point, I I should get that back. Yeah. And for us, when we approve emergency <clears throat> assistance for somebody to move into an apartment, I mean, mm -hmm. if I move into an apartment and I have to pay first month's rent, and that's the anticipation that when I move out, I get that back. Mm -hmm. But and under our emergency assistance programs, we're paying deposits to get people in apartments too, but uh, I never know of any time that we've gotten that money back. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Just to get my others, now if you have one child, you can get some assistance. You have three child, or three children. Excuse me. You can get assistance too. I mean, is that a fair thing there? I mean, I'm trying to see how much money you get if you only have one child or three child. You still get the same amount of money, huh? What do you get more? The same amount of deposit. I mean, deposit. So, yes, me. yes, sir. I mean the. If, if I had three children and I needed to go to daycare and I needed to come up $900 worth of deposit, I mean, we, we went with the direction of not saying, okay, let's pay for the deposit for all three children. Let's pay the deposit for one of the children. So again, if I'm having an issue getting my kids into daycare and coming up with $900, maybe $300 from deposit will help so that they only have to come up with 600. Uh, we haven't used it very often yet. This is just our proposal to you guys for us to be able to add it to the policy. So this is the 8% money that comes from the state. Yeah, 92% of this MPIP consolidated funds is federal and 8% mm -hmm. is state. So is there, does that 8% ever run out? I mean, so the county, Clay County gets so much and then does does, does it ever run out or? You know, our allocation has <clears throat> remained fairly steady. It's a formula and so it can change slightly mm -hmm. over time. Um, there's a lot of, count and in fact, we've been one of those counties that have not actually utilized our full allocation. Um, and actually our emergency mm -hmm. assistance approvals have gone down quite substantially as well um, over the last probably five years, I wanna say. Um, so I, I don't, we've been getting this, these MFIP dollars for years. Um, so I don't, I'm not aware of anything on the horizon in terms of those being um, diminished. Uh, our emergency assistance program, so for example, in, um, we'll go to one of our higher years in 2012, we spent, actually 2011, we were at 211,000 we spent in emergency assistance. And last year we spent, um, well, 2017 we spent 116. And last year we spent about 87,000. And we're checking on that, because that doesn't quite seem right to us. But, um, so we've, <coughs> we've just had less, less um, approvals for emergency assistance um, over the past year. So. We think, I think what we're seeing is, again, the, our policy um, does allow for um, myself and Larry to talk about unique circumstances. Um, and we do, we do that when we have a family who's coming in and whether it be a rental issue or a deposit or um, you know, the child care, we're looking at a number of factors. If we have kids that are at risk of out of home placement because the family's gonna be evicted from their apartment and you know, then we have deeper end services. There's times where we've talked about, you know what, this makes sense, let's approve that under our emergency assistance program. And so we would want that flexibility to continue. It hasn't happened for a long time. No, it's um, still a cheaper alternative. Though. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And this child care issue is becoming more and more of a difficulty. And we want to have the opportunity to, to, to um, approve it when it makes sense. 
offers that the family has to come up with some of the funds. But if in a situation where we had maybe three children, and based on our assessment, we really felt there is no way that this family could come up with the deposit for the other two kids, Larry and I would talk and, and we may make a decision that it makes sense to approve it. So we'd want to have that flexibility within the plan. Um, this is, a, again, it's a, an opportunity for us to get folks back to work and not have child care barrier to get them started. It's not unique as well. I think there's other counties that have child care as well as other kinds of things in their emergency yeah, I, 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 I guess my, you know, my, my issue is, you know, when you, when you talk about um, the, how, for example, the housing assistance that comes down to the state, the, that, that is, that's not referred to as a deposit. That's, 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 that's assistance to make sure that they get into an affordable living yes, situation. Yes, that's very different than our emergency right. assistance. Yeah. Now, with, under this emergency, and again, when I, anytime I think about a deposit, so this daycare provider has these, this child coming in, and I want a deposit that's gonna, for, you know, to make sure that you don't walk away without paying your, but what, what if they were all up to date? That's, that's the point that I'm trying to make at some point in time, is, just, is this just a freebie for somebody? Yeah. That, that I, I can understand the, the help in getting them in, but the, if the daycare provider is simply gonna get the $300 and the individual family met all of their responsibilities of their daycare contract, why should the daycare provider get to keep that $300? Well, again, I think... And, I, and again, I'm not against it. Yeah, we need all these daycare places, right? but when well, I just... I mean, um, then I think I need to look further into the deposits part, I mean, the apartment piece of it, too. I mean, I, um, separating those things, and when, if I move into an apartment or a client comes into our office mm -hmm. and applies for a deposit to move into an apartment, um, we, we don't have any way of saying or and contact the landlord and say okay if this person does move out and they get a deposit we want that money back well I mean, we haven't i mean but don't you think that don't you think that because if if we gave the tenant yeah. the money for a deposit to help them get in there mm -hmm. and the tenant leaves and gets the money back whose money was that really mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it there? Was it the tenants or was it the counties? That's right. yeah. so, so my point, you know, so maybe we need to look at that too. Okay. I, you know, it's, I, it's just it's just something to. It's it's one thing to help somebody get out of a predicament and get stable and, and get the daycare. We want that, but nobody should be profiting off of these dollars that we're investing into this. Yeah. I'm not aware. That's the, my, yeah, no, I, mean, it, it's I, a I fair, agree. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair um, statement. I'm not aware um, statewide of any protocols that the county or the state has in terms of this deposit issue. Mm -hmm. However, I, you know, we, we'll certainly look yeah. at that and we'll ask the state. They give good guidance, and there's quite a bit of um, statute language around the utilization of these funds. So if, we'll look at that. If, if somebody who wasn't who, who was going to a daycare provider and the daycare provider asked them for a deposit and they weren't getting it from Clay County, but they just got it out of their own check. And, and it, it, if, if, I'm, if I'm that parent paying that deposit and I fulfilled my contract, if it's not, a, it, you're calling it a deposit for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. So then the deposit should come back. And they're vendor paid, those deposits are vendor paid directly to the provider. Is that the case of the child yeah. care? Well, I, I, yeah. so you know, I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not opposed yeah. to this. I, I, I just question about, okay, once all said and done, how, yeah. Yeah. who benefited from this? <laughs> yeah, we'll sure um, look at that piece and, and bring some of that information back to you at a later okay. date. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Approve the change to the manual for child care assistant deposit. I will second. I will second it, but I would like to have a follow up on on researching the you know the end results of the deposit. Sure. Yes. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All same sign, motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. We'll move into the next one. Community living infrastructure. <coughs> yes, so, okay. Um, let's see, we are in June. So, over a year ago, you approved submission of a grant on behalf of our nine county region plus Wadena. So, it's, it's 10 counties, including Clay to submit, and with Clay County being the fiscal host, to submit a grant to the Department of Human Services for what's called community living infrastructure. And really what it, what it, yeah. the funds are designed to outreach to individuals with disabilities who are homeless, unstably housed, or are living in institutions and are looking to relocate back into a community setting. So it's for folks with disabilities. So, um, the proposal was that Clay County HRA would be the program managers and they were going to contract with the three CAP agencies in our 10 county region. So Lakes and Prairies, Mohubi Atwa, and West Central Minnesota Community Action. We received that grant and um, as a board you approved acceptance of that grant. It was a little over $385,000 for a one year period. And that ends now June 30th, this summer. Um, so in March, we submitted, um, per your approval, a new application to have those funds extended for the next two years. We submitted that proposal and was awarded um, additional funds for that grant to continue. We were not awarded the full grant that we requested but we were awarded a little over $392,000. So um, this request today is seeking your approval to accept those grant funds for the next um, two year period. And we would continue to contract with Clay HRA, who in turn would contract with the CAP agencies to continue the service. So that's kind of the background. <laughs> so this grant is more than we got last year. <clears throat> 392 well, is more. Uh, it's actually substantially less because it's it's it would appear it's only ten thousand ten thousand dollars more, but our three hundred eighty five thousand was for one year, and this is for two years. Excuse me. So yes, it's <clears throat> substantially less. However, um, what they're what they're doing is is doing a contract addendum. So they're allowing us to have 385,000 plus the 392 and they're making it a three year contract. So we will have some carryover funds from this year that they will allow us to use into the next years. But as a result of the cut, um, we will be working to revise the budget. We will yeah. have to reduce. So, so my, yeah. my, my question was, does the The payouts don't exceed the grant. No. That's no. Like, you yeah. know. no, no, we are having to revise the budget. Um, we're working with our partners to see if, you know, how they want to handle the outreach workers that mm -hmm. were hired and that kind of stuff. So we'll have to revise the budget, but absolutely, the budget will match the revenues okay. uh, that we're getting. I'll make a motion to approve to accept the grant. Second. Motion and second to approve the request for the grant. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All the same time, motion carries. Okay. One more thing, Rhonda. Okay. And then I do have two signature pages for that that okay. I could. I could pass it over. Oh, thank you. <coughs> um, okay. And the last item is um, a request to replace a resignation. Um, we have a case aide in our child um, and family service unit who is has submitted his resignation. He's going back to school and moving out of the area, and we would like to to um, refill his position. Uh, he is mostly involved in our children's mental health work and uh, um, some of our contracted provider work. He also does supervised visits and transportation as well as 
a host of things that help support our child protection workers. So we feel really strongly that we could not um, manage the workload without replacing that position. We do anticipate that maybe we would have some internal interest in this, and so um, we would request the motion to approve any backfill. Um, did do a wage calculation. We will see, just for this year's budget, um, about a $3,500 savings in the budget. You know, he was on step three and three or four. Um, we would, even with internal movement, we would anticipate hiring the new person at that first step, so. Move to approve with that. Second. Motion and a second for further request. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Should I grab those? Uh, he's got oh, there. Oh, oh, there. there. Oh, thank you. Okay, next item announcement and recognition of one vegetable, one community. Alicia Elkrin. Yep, come on up. Okay. Good morning. Um, is that okay if I stand? Sure. Okay. Yes, if you um, my name is Alicia um, Halfren, and I'm one of the Clay County Master Gardeners, and I just wanted to call recognition um, to one of our programs that we're doing this year, which is called One Vegetable, One Community. Um, it unites our communities by encouraging gardeners of all the levels to grow, cook, and share a featured vegetable of the year. Um, each community chooses their own vegetable, which this year it's carrots. And it starts community conversations about food and how communities support healthy lifestyles. So we're doing this, and this year it's um, carrots, and we're doing it for the whole Clay County. Last year we did Moorhead, but we're doing it for the whole county. Um, and that's obviously an extension program. And we have support on um, Agassiz Seeds, the SNAP Ed's working on us with it, and um, the Northwest Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships working on on it with us. And packets are available at all for libraries in Moorhead, or Clay County, sorry, um, public schools in Moorhead, and then the Wick County Health Office um, and the Family Services Center. So I wanted to call attention to it just because it's a good program. There's, we have packets, and then there's seeds in every one, two, and we have different um, activities. All the instructions to grow them are in there, and there's seeds, and so just trying to get people excited about um, gardening. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I wanted to present and make you guys aware of it too. And I'd like to hand out pamphlets too, if that's okay. Yep. Yep. Um, let's see, we got five here at the table, and then I'll get the rest of the people later. And that's Kind of all I had. I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of it. I know we do a lot of different things in the county um, with a Master Gardener program, but um, this is one kind of one that I'm working on and excited that just talking about people about gardening, getting people to eat healthy. Rosie's been helping me do some stuff too. Um, kind of starts with just people learning to do some things themselves and stuff like that. So that looks like a great program. Yeah. 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 Any questions for Alicia? Well, don't say hello to Rosie. We don't get to see her very much. Yes, anymore. I invited her, and I know Ben, ben came. So um, I think I need one more then. Somebody must have not got one over here. Um, Frank. No, we I got it. Oh, yeah. You sure you don't want one? Bring it on. I was just going to give her one here, yeah. too. Didn't want her left out. Okay. <laughs> and, and then while you're here as a master gardener, I, you know, I, the, the work that you master gardeners have done around this campus is... Excellent. Really, really nice. I, I don't know if that's been your area at Yeah, all, no, I have worked on And I know Jenny had mentioned that, but Jenny's not here today. Yeah. Um, she had rec recognition. I was like, okay, well, fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, me and Lynn Flanders um, were did working on the LEC and then the jail part, which it won't be done, we're mm -hmm. installing that. And of course, then I take care of the courthouse yeah, garden well, down that's there. Thank you. So, yeah. yeah we appreciate so, it. So, just kind of just come recognition to the one vegetable and get people excited about gardening. I hope you plant some carrot seeds. Um, there is a contest at the Clay County Fair for the largest carrot in Clay County. <laughs> so, we hope we have some entries from this room. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I don't and, know if come and up anything you want to add? So, we're good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat>
Okay, next item re request to fill vacancy for full time correctional officer. Dustin, good morning. Good morning. So, we had a, uh, another resignation come up. Um, her last day will be the 27th of June. Uh, she's leaving for a position with uh, a federal probation office in Bismarck. Um, so this is a, a DOC mandated position with our staffing plan. It's in our, our budget for the year. Um, there is a cost savings calculation that was done by HR um, of just about $6,200 for the year, uh, which will probably actually be a little more. She plans to use some more of her vacation before she leaves here. So uh, it'll be a little bit higher of a savings. But Why not correctional officers? I mean, since our jail population is down somewhat, do we still need this many correctional officers on all the time? Or? Um, so our population has gone down. It is starting to go back up. Um, and we are seeing an increase over the last couple of weeks. Um, right now we're averaging somewhere between 120 to 130 now. Okay. Um, and I anticipate that's gonna continue to go up. We are going into our typical busy season. Um, but last year, weren't we, when we brought them all in, weren't we at 160 or 170? We were probably somewhere between 140 to 150. Oh, okay. That's the highest thing. Yeah, uh, 154, I think, is the highest we've ever hit. And I, I think that was okay. probably coming up in the next month or two <coughs> about a year ago. So, um, it, you know, pushing into late summer, early fall is, is our typical busy, busy busier time. Um, you know, right now is pretty busy. We put a lot of uh, staff vacations on hold last year. Uh, moving into the facility so a lot of those staff have held off their vacations until this summer and so we're trying to accommodate those staff as much as possible we had a probably about a three month span where, where we kind of put the halt to all vacations just because the the date moving into the facility kept moving and so we kept having to plan for that and make sure that all of our staff were trained so we're trying to get caught up on that and get our staff some time off 120 you're talking about so that include persons you bring in from other counties? Yeah, persons? we we are housing a few for the um, U.S. Marshals right now. Uh, we are housing a few uh, worker lease minimum security people. Um, and we are looking at, uh, Julie and the Sheriff met with the Department of Corrections probably two or three weeks ago. And we are looking at starting um, to house with the Department of Corrections and we're still in talks, but it is something that we're open to um, and, and would like to, to do to utilize our empty bed space. Okay. Move to approve the request. Thank you. We've got a motion and a second to approve the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Both the same sign, motion carries. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Justin. Darren, got an update on policy to reflect our uh, changes in the law on fleet usage, Georgia and there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I just kind of panicked there because I was looking at the agenda and I thought, oh crap, I'm on the agenda and I didn't have anything <laughs> ready. So, but thankfully Georgia brought uh, some of the information. Um, the policy is uh, we're looking at is uh, in August uh, this year, uh, August 1st, I believe it is. Yep. Uh, the legislation passed a law that you're not going to be able to use your cell phones and stuff uh, while driving. Mm -hmm. And there's some uh, stipulations of it can only be voice activated, and I think you can only push the button once to answer and that type of thing. And so uh, what we thought it was important to add that to our um, fleet vehicle policy uh, that we have. And so we had a couple meetings on this, I believe, and we were kind of trying to figure out what we need to do, should do. And uh, I think we came up to the, to the fact that we really didn't have to change the policy too much because it basically says that 
if you're driving a county vehicle, you have to obey, obey all traffic laws anyway. And if that becomes a traffic law, then you'll be obeying that. But under the additional information under safety, we added a text that basically says uh, absolutely no texting while driving the fleet vehicle. Employees are encouraged to pull off the roadway to utilize their electronic devices. State law allows hands-free cell phone operations while traveling. Fines for failure to use a cell phone. Hands-free will be responsibility of the individual charged. Failure to comply with the law could substantially affect the decision in a workman's work comp case. Um, so when we met, we thought, and I can't even remember who was in that meeting. I think Steve and uh, Mark Sloan, mm -hmm. myself and Georgia. I can't remember if anybody else was there or not. But um, so what we thought was if if nothing else, we should probably provide at least holders, and Georgia has a sample of that holder, uh, to put in the county fleet vehicles. Because I know, I, I know when I'm driving, I have my phone down on the seat or, you know, so, and with this, at least they can at least put their phone in, because I know a lot of people use them for How do you do it? Uh, navigation, you know, you can still use it for navigation and that type of thing. It can either go in this way, if you have a smaller case like this, or you can pull these out and uh, it can go in the opposite one. Let's see if I can do the demonstration. Yeah. Like this way for like a GPS. Phantom one thing. here. Yep. Get the demo. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think we uh, looked at several different types of uh, holders and uh, we thought that that one would probably be the best. We don't want them disappearing from the cars so they can actually uh, be stuck on the the dashboard the other way. Right. Right. And um, so all we're doing today is looking for approval to make that change to the policy um, for the for the fleet vehicles. Um, I think Georgia is uh, in the process of buying 13, 13 of them. We were going to put one in each vehicle and then we're going to open it up to the other departments that have um, vehicles if they wanted to. Some departments, I think, already have some something similar to that, but we'd be for I sure. believe they, they're about, what, 15 bucks? Right around there, yep. I have a question when you say employees are encouraged to pull off the roadway. Shouldn't we say employees have to pull off the roadway? They're on a text? Well, I think if they are using it the way the new law describes, they can still answer the phone and talk via speakerphone and, and microphone. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're texting, they, sh they shouldn't even be doing that. Right. So if they're texting, yes, they should definitely be pulling off the road. Some of our older fleets, they're not able to, but the newer ones, if they sync their phone with the, mm -hmm. the vehicle, then it's hands-free mm -hmm. that they can well, they talk. Well, push one button. But yeah. yeah text to talk and things like that. They'd have but to if they, their, if they, if they are looking for an address or something like that, yeah, you would definitely want them pulling off the, the road to input a, an address that they're going to using a GPS or whatever. So, um, yeah. one of the more wishes. Well, on the, on terms of the policy, uh, um, I would, I would move approval of the text change in the fleet uses policy. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, Hearing none. And one question. I mean, who's going to, other than being stopped or something like that, I mean, we're, there's no way to, to enforce it. Enforce it, is there? Unless you get stopped, and then it's the responsibility of the individual. Okay. Clay right. County won't be responsible for that. Okay. I would hope to see if somebody, if we, if we see somebody doing it, we could probably remind them of the policy. But well, you're, you're, you'd be violating a, a policy. Right. right. And I, I pass Clay County vehicles yeah. going home. And, you know. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is there a... I realize that if you get stopped by the law, then there's a fine or whatever the case may be, but is there anything that Clay County does? I mean, if an employee gets stopped, do we do anything? I mean, this, this doesn't say we're going to do anything about it, is it? No. no I mean, it's not a guarantee that we're going to need to know about it. Yeah. We probably wouldn't even know about it unless it comes back to us for one reason or another. Right. I mean, if, let's say that the vehicle was 
in an accident and they determined that the person was texting while it was while they were driving, and then that would come back to us okay. uh, through our insurance company. Right. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And in terms of that, you just, just well, them. it's within your budget, whatever. Dave, come on up. You need you. to choose every thing you buy. Uh, next item, request to fill vacancy for full-time engineering technician. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Um, our rash of retirees is still continuing. <laughs> That are probably our, one of our longest, if not our longest employee with highway department is uh, looking at retiring uh, towards the end of July. So we'd like to get on the uh, advertising train and see if we can't uh, get a good qualified candidate. The way we've done it in the past is we've advertised for both a senior engineering tech and an engineering tech. And that way, you know, if you advertise for one and don't get anybody, it's really hard to get a senior tech. It's almost impossible, but you never know. Uh, so the, the idea was advertised for both the way we did when uh, our bituminous inspector retired the same thing and that way we can kind of take a look at both areas if you you know if you can get a someone that hasn't been in the field all that long uh, somewhat fresh out of school and train them I guess that's what we've been seeing mostly so yeah. more wishes both bro second motion and a second to approve the request any further discussion Hearing none, all in favor, say by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, motion carries. There you go. Thanks, Thank you. Dave. <coughs> Community report, Kevin. Uh, on Tuesday the 4th, we had a highway tracking meeting and we um, discussed the retiring of um, our, one of our senior, what Dave just talked about. Uh, we got a little bit of an update on the Glendon construction project and the 15th Avenue North construction project. And, um, you know, we have plan for the um, visit for our five-year plan with the tour. That's coming up and um, I think June 20th. Then on the 5th of uh, June, I went to St. Paul to representing the Diversion Authority to meet with the DNR, the Army Corps, and Buffalo Red. Uh, this, was a, this was a meeting that was established by the Buffalo Red Watershed District uh, in conversations with the DNR regarding Condition 22, which has to do with property rights and acquisitions uh, for the Diversion Project. So there was a lot of discussion there and there were some suggestions that we made to the DNR about how they interpret that um, con condition number 22. And so we're hopeful that, that we can come to some sort of agreement on that would be really beneficial to the Buffalo Red. And we see it as a benefit from our standpoint as a diversion authority and the core really didn't have any major concerns with it. So uh, that's in the process, and I'll talk a little bit based on last night's meeting. But um, on the sixth was the no, that was like, that was canceled. Never mind. Uh, then uh, on Monday the tenth, we started off with our uh, correctional and juvenile detention meetings. Uh, the jail now is having some issues with the um, plumbing with the toilets. They're having to replace some parts and I guess it was determined that it was an inadequate type of a seal that wears out based on the water type that we have. And so it, it's still under warranty and so we're looking at um, going to a different brand and it's referred to as a Royal and so I so I basically said well we want to go with the Royal Flush then and, and, <laughs> and see if we Would could. that concern the LEC too? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know that it's as a significant of a problem there. I think they're going to research that and we're also looking to make sure it doesn't go on at the juvenile center uh, but I you know when you have a 24-7 operation in a 
in a you know in a correctional facility yeah. with constant use there's that's far different I think too than yeah. but I think you're right and I think that that is being yeah. looked at in, in all the facilities to uh, and then the then we did have the um, juvenile detention and you know the focus continues to be on on um, I th you know I think that maybe maybe Steve can give a little on his report there's some really concerns about uh, timing of things going on here in the next six weeks um, that are how they and I think there's got to be some a little bit of give on the part of our, our staff and all this stuff, but Steve can explain that. And then we continue to monitor the, uh, you know, the issues in regards to contingencies. And uh, you know, so far, we haven't had any major surprises lately, but we are still targeting to be short on the contingency. Then uh, last night, I did attend the uh, Buffalo Red River Watershed District and uh, oh yesterday excuse me yesterday morning we had our Division Authority um, Chairs Executive Committee meeting and we primarily went over what had happened in St. Paul and some other things coming up and then uh, last night at the, the Buffalo Red meeting we we gave a presentation to them on suggested language interpretations that we're hope, hopeful that the DNR would sign off on that deals with these mitigation issues related to and land acquisitions and what can and can't be built within the operating pool and the maximum pool. It gets kind of technical. Um, it, the result of that was, um, I think the Buffalo Red was very pleased with what we were proposing. Um, so they're, they're trying to meet to go over that. They have to. They have to act on our permit by June 28th, and so we'll see what what happens. So they're doing a lot of things in the meantime, and they are going. They did say they're going to meet with their attorneys regarding the contested case and whether or not that's going to move forward. So there's a <coughs> lot of things going on with the Buffalo Red over the next couple of weeks. Lastly, I did I did attend the. Pick meeting this morning, and that was all. Almost all of it was in regard to um, what we talked about today um, in our market study, um, and then there was a little bit of a discussion regarding um, retirement issues with Para, and so that that concludes my report. Frank, hey. Uh, Tuesday, too, I had, <coughs> excuse me, highway tracking, which uh, uh, Commissioner Campbell has already discussed. Uh, um, Tuesday afternoon, I had a meeting with the Yamco, uh, excuse me, Historical Society, Society there, discussing possible rent increases or something like that. that we haven't got a notice yet, but we're just preparing for that. Um, Wednesday, ice cream social at Linden. Saturday, the parade at Hawley. Last night I went to Cromwell uh, Township and I've uh, got a couple of discussions there with the Buffalo Rich that did some assessment there that they're not quite satisfied with. So I'm going to check that out. And uh, other than that, uh, that was mine. That's all I have. Yeah. Um, on Wednesday, June 5th, I attended the City of Moorhead Planning Commission meeting and we had a couple of public hearings and uh, one was to approve a variance uh, for a slightly larger garage in the city of Moorhead uh, over in the Brookdale area. And uh, then uh, we had uh, a public hearing, a, a vacation of the easements in the Prairie Meadows 6th edition for utility easements. Uh, they're going from single family homes to twin homes there and they needed some additional space for utility. Um, and then there was a request by key contracting uh, along 20th, 28th Avenue North in Moorhead, where the old rifle range was located, they had about a two and three quarter inch or two and three quarter acre property that Key Contracting uh, wants to have uh, rezoned uh, to heavy industrial, which would open the, the gates to pile aggregate there, 
and there was some questions about um, it's right adjacent to Snaky Creek, and if the banks are uh, somewhat uh, elastic, then there could be a problem with uh, soil sliding into the Snaky Creek. And so they were going to consult, and we tabled the motion and for the request for the next meeting in hopes to get some information from key contracting. They were not present at the, at the meeting. And that concludes my report. Thank you. I had the jail and the, the construction meetings yesterday also and uh, for the detention center, Kevin reported on that. And uh, had a PIC meeting and uh, we had lengthy discussions on the market study this morning and that was it for me, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, last Tuesday, I, you know, I attended the highway tracking that's been addressed, uh, spent much of the 5th working on the 2020 bat budget planning. Uh, on the 6th, I uh, participated in the Strive uh, for Excellence meeting. Uh, again, we focused on uh, the recruit and retention, looking for additional members, and I think uh, looking at some tangible uh, items that, uh, that the committee can, uh, can look at uh, to, to move forward in that issue. Um, we had county management uh, that morning. Uh, we updated the, the department heads in the market study, had discussions on the 2020 budget and, and the hands-free uh, one, one touch cell phone policy that was addressed this morning. Um, at the seventh, had department head evaluation. On the 10th, we had the diversion chair coordinator meeting, which Commissioner Campbell has talked about. Uh, we had uh, the owners meetings uh, for the juvenile center uh, and uh, and the, the corrections facility, uh, the, the, just to touch on the juvenile center, uh, there's uh, they're getting to the end of phase two of the facility uh, expansion, and they're hoping that there will be a little bit farther on a portion of the classrooms, uh, and, and they they are they're not going to potentially meet that deadline of of. Uh, the beginning of July of where, where they're looking at. So they're looking at different opportunities to hold their classes uh, and, and a couple other different things that uh, move forward. Um, I also, the, that day I, I ran into uh, Scott Fettig prior to our owners meeting. Uh, we had some discussions uh, last uh, week at board. Uh, I talked about uh, that he would be presenting uh, a uh, master planning uh, contract of sorts for our for our interpretation I identified that at the time I was looking at about a fifty thousand uh, dollar price tag uh, the contract uh, ended up uh, coming in or proposed contract came in at right around thirty nine six uh, I did spend some time uh, speaking with each of you individually um, this uh, this week or this past week and uh, he is uh, would be open to uh, come up to the facility or come up to the board to talk about it in about a month uh, and so uh, we'll look at look for that in future future uh, meetings. One of the things you did encourage uh, us from our perspective as, as we prepare is looking at identifying um, um, a committee uh, of how we're going to address and what the board's scope would be for that. I know we don't have a couple of commissioners here today, so it's probably a better discussion for another day. Uh, but uh, that, that would be something that we could work on uh, in the meantime. Um, just a couple of commissioner portfolio discussions at, at the board last week. Uh, there was a, we, dis, we had Janelle Cheney uh, from the Minnesota Department of Corrections uh, talk about our criminal justice advisory board. Uh, the chair had indicated at one point he had attended those meetings. Uh, and uh, so we, I, we went back and did some, did some looking. Uh, and uh, we, did, uh, we, did have, uh, we did have a criminal justice advisory board at one point. Uh, Janelle has not run that for a number of years and so um, we had spoke about uh, adding that to the portfolio, uh, having a, both a primary and, and an al alternate. And so um, the chair had indicated that uh, between uh, uh, himself and Frank, Mr. Gross, that would be something that uh, would be open to. I would, uh, I would move that with uh, as a per diem. Okay. With Frank uh, and or with uh, Commissioner Wayland and Gross. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign, motion carries. Okay. Uh, and then the second piece was, is we've been having some discussion at the board level about the joint powers 
uh, the the city and the and the uh, school district would, was hope, looking to combine the joint powers and the joint facilities meetings. It sounds like there's been a number of discussions on the commissioner level, uh, and uh, there's an agreement that uh, as long as the joint facilities meeting would be a uh, standard agenda item on the in the joint powers uh, group that they would be we would be willing on the county to combine those now commissioner have any other comments on that uh, but we would be in in if in moving that change we would be uh, looking uh, commissioner mojo would would be removed from her portfolio for the well it would be removed from mine too oh yeah and yours yes correct because from, it was we were both on the facilities task facilities so yes it'd be removed from both of ours yes so. um just a couple other things. Uh, Friday, we have our, our district uh, meeting in uh, Fergus Falls. I've provided uh, each of commissioners an agenda uh, for that. Um, if there's any different things, part of, uh, part of the, the tweet, continue to tweet kind of the, the county uh, report format. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover, uh, in addition to things that we've talked about in the past, please let me know. Uh, and they do they shifted from last year they're going to have the legislators all in the afternoon rather than throughout the day of hope, hopefully getting a more consistent message an opportunity to talk with our legislatures um, next Tuesday just a reminder we have our county picnic at 1130 to 1 uh, and our county board meeting is actually that that evening at 530 with the uh, Board of Appeals and equalization at 630 that concludes my report yeah, I just wanted to comment um, um, this morning I sat in uh, on the pick meeting because Commissioner Mosha wasn't there and they kind of felt that it was important to have an alternate that technically is not on my list of things but uh, I think in these particular cases when we have to have an alternate alternate move in I don't know how we, for, for DMs. yeah how we deal with that but you know, well I think we can we just have a motion if a, if a commissioner has to f fill in, uh, you know, as an alternate and somebody's not available, that the, that commissioner that would then be eligible for the per diem. Yeah, but I would, I would be and fine. a motion would, to that effect. We need a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to that effect. Right, okay. And I'll, I'll second it. Uh, but with, with the caveat that there are, there are some, some of our committees that were on that are established by policy that may or may not allow an alter, alternate. So I, so it's wherever there's an alternate allowed, I think is we'd have to make sure that that, there, there are instances where. Well, but even then sometimes they, yeah. somebody goes to fill in, they're, they're not really an alternate, they're just a replacement, I guess, for that. Yeah. Substitute. But there, I think there's a, and I'd have to go back and look, but I think there's a couple of them that if the, if the actual uh, member is not there, there's no vote. Oh, yeah. so can't be too many. No, there's. It's very. I, I think there might be just one or two like that. I'm not sure. I'd have to check. But well, you know, and it's I think, in, in general though. Yeah, if yeah, if in general, there, somebody has yeah. to fill in, then sure. they would be eligible right. for. We can add that to yeah. the list that on the bottom of the sheet. So Should be on everybody's that there right. can be an alternate to any, yeah. anything. Yeah. Exactly. That's basically what we're doing here. When there is no other alternate. Yeah, if there if there's an assigned alternate, that would be the person. But if they're sure. not available, then right. anybody can serve as an alternate. So, with okay. Him, so. okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing in all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, so Steve, were we, were we going to talk about anything about the committee for the uh, expansion? Uh, yeah, we right. could, but I was just wondering if that. two commissioners gone, and then we could move in next week. Okay. Anything else? Well, I, anything for you know, I think you should you should come up with what you think that should okay. be. Okay, Steve and I can talk about yeah. that some more. So, we're good.